Hey everybody, Matt here with Take Roads Less Traveled, and today on the Avalanche, we are going to be replacing our Yakima racks with a true bed rack that I'm going to be making today. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. Now, while the Yakima racks work really well for holding the rooftop tent over the bed of the Avalanche, especially with the covers, it just isn't doing exactly what I want it to do. As you can see, the tent hangs out over the end of the bed quite a bit. It's about a good 10 inches that it hangs out over and it completely blocks my rear view. So these are just a couple things I want to address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a rack system that unfortunately does actually drill into these bed covers, uh, but it's also going to allow the tent to move forward quite a bit, which is going to make it, it's also going to sit higher. So I'm not going to have to worry about it interfering with these sail panels. Because the reason it has to overhang so much is because I have to be able to open it over top of these sail panels because I've changed it to where rather than opening over the back of the truck it opens over the side which is typically how you want it and so I've got it reoriented and while this works I know it can be better and I know I can build a bed rack for pretty cheap as well so I am using one by two channel with a 125 wall uh, that would be about an eighth inch I've got two 20 foot sticks of it and we're gonna get cutting on this and work out the design, which, well, I shouldn't say work out the design, I've already got the design, but uh, get it all welded together and everything. And I've got, like I said, I've got two 20 foot sticks, so I've got 40 feet. Now that is quite a bit more than I need, but I bought 40 feet just in case my trigonometry from high school is a little off, and it's been quite a while. So we're gonna see if we can make this work, and I think it's gonna turn out really, really well. These are the plans that I drew up for this rack. It's gonna have a 48 inch base, total height of 12 inches, which means that my runners are gonna be 13 and six and a half sixteenths inches long with a top width of 36 inches. Uh, you can see I've done a little bit of my trick here so that I can figure out exactly what my bottom angle is gonna be here, what my top angle is gonna be here, and exactly how much I need to notch out of this channel in order to be able to create the angles that I need. And uh, when you haven't done trigonometry since high school, it's always good to do a little bit of a refresher. So I have to do a total cut length of 62 and 13 sixteenths inches out of this piece. And let's get to it. All right, so I have my piece and I'm ready to make my notch. So I've measured 13 and six and a half sixteenths. And the way I did that was I just took my tape measure from the end and counted my, got to 13 and then one, two, three, four, five, six sixteenths. And then right halfway between the six and seven sixteenths mark, I made my mark. So that gave me my six and a half. Now, to get my angle, what I'm going to do is, here's the top of my channel, here's the bottom, so I'm gonna notch it this direction. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my pivot point of my T-square right here. And all along here, I have my angles, my, my degrees. So I'm gonna just take, and I'm gonna pivot this until I get to 26 and a half degrees at the top of my board, or in this case, my channel, and just gonna make a mark right there. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Just rotate this around, pivot it right at that point until I get to 26 and a half degrees. 
at the top and make another line. And what that does is this gives me a 53 degree notch in my channel so that once I have both sides notched, I can bend it and have the angle I need. Now that I have all of my notches cut, all I'm gonna do is just put the metal right here on the ground, I'll put it here and give it a nice bend, just like that. Do the same on the other side. Now I have my upright. I'm just gonna take and weld these joints. With my uprights welded and now done, now I can focus on cutting out the bases that are gonna get welded to the feet of these. I need to make eight of them because I'm gonna have four that attach to the feet of the uprights, and then I need to have four that go underneath the bed covers so that I can run a bolt through and secure them. These are the eight footings that I did. So these ones that are just the L bracket, I trimmed off one side of the channel. Uh, you can see I've marked where I need to drill my holes at and everything. And these are gonna sit just like this. So uh, the raised wall will go to the inside and then the, uh, the entire stand will just come up and come off of there and down and these will get welded to the base of the uprights. And then underneath those are gonna be these. I've, I've got these fully channeled and these are gonna be under the bed, uh, under the bed covers and they're gonna sandwich in between. So really what you'll end up with is, if I can show this through here. So if this is the inside edge of the truck, you'll end up with something like that. That takes and kind of just covers it all up. So, uh, let's see if I can give you a little better shot there with the light. So, there you go. So, it'll sit just like this. Bed curver will go in between these, they'll sandwich and get bolted together. So, real easy. And now it's time to do some drilling. Now that all the holes are drilled for my bolts and hardware and attaching these to the truck, I can go ahead and weld the feet to the uprights. You can see I've got a bunch of magnets on here right now, and the whole purpose for that is to make sure that this upright is level and square when, when I weld it together. The last thing I want is for this to be off in any way, shape, or form and have it affect the, its ability to hold the rooftop tent the way it should. So, let's get to welding. You can see that is not gonna go anywhere. Really good heat penetration as well. So, let's get the rest of it welded up. And there we go. Feet are welded on. So now I can take these and I will mock them up on the bed of the avalanche. And what I'm actually gonna do is I cut a couple extra pieces here. I'm actually gonna do a runner that will uh, overlap a little bit uh, right here on the upright. It's gonna, I'll cut some of the channel out and notch it and I'm gonna weld it right over top of here and I'm gonna do a runner from one upright to the other and that'll help give it some fore and aft stability. So I've gotta do that still and really that's it and then it's paint time. So I'm gonna call it a day for now and get back at it tomorrow. So I cut my runners to 31 and 7 8 inches and you can see I've notched them out so that they'll fit right over top of these uprights. And this gives you the basic layout of what this rack is going to look like. So I need to weld this up. I can place it on the bed after this and then drill out the holes in the covers to be able to mount it. With those cross pieces welded, I went ahead and painted everything just in a flat black and mounted the tent. And you can see I've got everything drilled, bolted in place, tent is secured have just enough space. I measured this out so I would have just enough space for the tent uh, mounting runs or the uh, mounting channels to work out just well. And now the tent sits almost perfectly level with the roof rack, with the top of the roof rack, which is exactly what I wanted. So this is just such a much better setup. I have options where I can mount things onto the sides here as well. And to show you how I mounted it underneath, I actually removed the 
uh, rain gutters that go below all this and ended up uh, putting these extra little brackets on that go up against the bottom of the mounting channel and then just ran drilled through it and ran the bolts all the way through with lock nuts so everything's good to go you can see I've got it up there as well and over there now what this means is that I cannot remove this without unbolting it so that's a little bit of a pain but I'm okay with that because it's not very often I take the bed covers off uh, it's very rare that I'm gonna do that so I think this setup is gonna work well uh, the last thing I do need to do in order to be a hundred percent legal is I need to take and splice into my third brake light wiring which is right up in here and I'm gonna run it down the sail panel uh, underneath this piece and then I'm gonna take and run the loom up here on the uh, on the new bed rack and back and I actually pulled a third brake light off the spoiler of a uh, of an early 2000s Nissan Sentra that's gonna get mounted right here and I'll have that third brake light centered and visible so that I can be hundred percent legal without having any issues there so this is the new way that I am mounting a rooftop tent on the Avalanche with the new bed rack and I am super excited all in it cost me about hundred and twenty dollars that was uh, for more steel than I actually needed uh, but I bought extra steel just in case I messed up on anything so in all reality you could probably make this for about seventy to seventy five dollars and uh, if you've got the welder you're that's all you need because everything on here uh, the entire rack including including these feet including obviously these bottom plates all of that is just made from the same one by two channel and like I said uh, with 20 feet of one by two channel you can make this exact same bed rack exactly how I have it so not a bad way to spend uh, what would be roughly 70 75 dollars to get that rooftop tent up a little bit higher have plenty of workspace underneath have it looking good level with the truck and in my opinion an overall better setup than the Yakima racks I had. So this is Matt signing off and I will see you on the roads less traveled.